Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and let us enjoy one more beautiful story about Islam. As you know, Islam is the most beautiful religion. And those who believe in Allah and his prophet Muhammad, they will go to heaven. And the heaven of Allah is nothing they can imagine. So today we will tell you a story will open your heart to Allah. Many of you will be crying, get your tissues. And there is many reasons for that. Some of you is going to suffocate. Some of you is going to be shocked. Some of you is going to be very happy. Some of you, disclaimer, you might die from laughing. So don't play me for what will happen to you. You've been warned. Muhammad, he promised the Muslims, the Muhammadans, a lot of promises. And they are very, very beautiful. In order to make you believe and obey and fall in love with the Prophet of Allah. If not the Prophet of Allah, how we can get such a paradise? So today we have a guest. His name is Mufti Mink. He is a very well known person. He can describe the story better than me. Let us hear a little bit what we will do in the paradise. Bill Gates. You notice the name has a gate on it, which means it stops somewhere. His wealth will not just carry on. Subhanallah. You know, I entered here, I told my cousin, you know, I don't intend to say things which make people laugh, but sometimes it comes out. I, I don't intend it. But sometimes it's just me. I think I just, I'm a normal human being like everyone else. And you know, you think of things like this Bill Gates thing came to me now, whilst I'm sitting with you, subhanAllah. I thought of it and I said, Wallahi, it's a gate, let me say it. It is. <laughs> Jannah has eight gates, subhanAllah, wide open, flung. You will enter from the one you deserve to enter from. And some people will be qualified to enter from any door they wish. This is why the one who fasts, we know the name of the door. What is it? There are other ones. According to one narration, there is a door called a sabr for those who are bearing sabr. Those who, and there are so many names that are given, and some people will be told, enter from any one of these eight doors you want because you are qualified. You have so many degrees. I'm so astonished, you know. I mean, if I'm going to be inside the house, it doesn't matter from which door I enter. I mean, the intelligence, when I say stupidity, is amazing. So now I'm going to go inside the heaven. And there is some, they can enter from any door. And there is some, they can enter only from one door. But what difference is going to make? You are entering heaven anyway. You cannot enter from the eight in the same time. Does it really matter? Aren't they all gate to heaven? And when you step in, you will be in heaven. And why there are eight doors? Is Allah going to discriminate people too? When they enter heaven? Eight gates. Some, they can enter from any gate. Some, they can enter only from one gate. Some, they can enter from two gates. But it doesn't matter, you idiot. You are in already. But now, what will happen inside when you get in? Tell us more. MashaAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us entry at least from one door. So, they will be open. Whoever Everybody says, Amin. They want to get into the door. All right. There is no chance of coming out again after that. And they... The second you enter it, you cannot get out.
What kind of heaven is heaven is? <laughs> the second you enter it, there is no chance you can get out. <laughs> it sounds very Islamic to me, by the way. <laughs> I mean, so the first thing you do in heaven, you lose your freedom. You get in. The second you enter it, you cannot get out. Get out of here. You must be kidding. Tell us more. They won't think of coming out because in Jannah, as the Quran says, uh -huh. they will have whatever they want in it. Whatever. No, you must be kidding. Whatever they want. What? Anything? Anything. I mean, do you mean it? Explain to us more. Whatever they want in it. And then Allah says, Waladayna mazid. Yeah. And we have something. And look, when they sing it, supposedly they have to make the Quran more valuable. Like, Waladayna mazid. Ya yazid. Ayna anta ya faqeed. What a stupid religion. So, and we have more. Allah saying to them, no, no, no. You wish whatever you want, and we have more. Yeah, yeah, we have more. Open the drawer. <laughs> extra for them. There's extra, there's extra, okay? Not only this, there's extra. Come on. Just, just get, get in. We have something more for them. We'll get to that, inshallah, in a few moments. But in a few minutes, we will get into that. Come on. Why you are, are you making us excited? Is that like an action movie? Like, you know, an act, like, you know, make, make a... Should we put a, like a music of a background or something for this? What is the why you put behind us like uh, trees and you know those Muslims they put uh, images of heaven like you know and the the girls man the girls I want to go and get the girls I cannot wait you know and you know I hope I hope they are not girls from the Democratic Party because they are men dressed as girls. But in another verse, Allah says. The wording is so unique, so powerful. In it is what the souls will desire. Like what? What your soul desires. Imagine the term body desires is not mentioned. Because someone might say, my body is going to be depleted in the earth. The body I have here right now, it's going to, as Allah says, minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'idukum. You know, we have created you from soil and we will return you in it. We don't want people to argue. There must be no statement of argument. Allah says, Anfus. You will be resurrected also again from there as per the plan of Allah. But exactly the, the, the fine details of what will happen, we only have a certain limit of it. This is, this is the little? This is the little. You just said whatever you wish. I mean, didn't you just cover everything? Just, we have only little, eight gates, each gate, you know? We have description how they, how tall they will be, how, how old they will be, how their face will look like, and we have little, we have little. We know we are resurrected, we know we will be very tall, we know we will be brought up to the age of 33, those who have passed away beyond the age of puberty will be brought up to the age of 33 so even if imagine you you die and you are six years old you enter the door of allah you are 33 years old how nice you die and you are 70 years old you enter the door of allah and you are 33 years old like the age of jesus you see they are stuck with christianity uh, and uh, uh, he said you will be very tall how tall if you died at 18 19 or 70 or 90 you will be brought up to the age of 33, a certain height, situna dira'an. It's translated by some as 18 meters and some as 60 meters. Whatever. It I like the 60 meters. I like the 60 meters. So listen. Size doesn't matter. You go to heaven, you will be 60 meters. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I remember, you know, there is a, a Muslim, uh, his, her name is Mimi Hijab. She said that when you go to heaven, 
uh, when Adam was in heaven, he was 60 meters tall. Uh, but then, brother, then, just brother, then something happened. References, uh, Adam alayhi salam, a prophet of Islam, as being 60 cubits tall, which is... No way. Now we understand what's going on. You were in heaven 60 meter tall. And now you are going back. So Allah, he will resize you. I mean, do you see how beautiful this story is? Allah will make him shorter. I will be 60 meter tall. I have a problem to go in the airplane. I have a problem to go in the bus. I have a problem to go anywhere. I have a problem to find clothing for me. Finally, I will be shorter. I will be just 60 meters. Isn't it? This is amazing. Uh, but there is a hadith, uh, Mimi Hijab and Mufti Mink. It says that you will be 90 miles tall. I mean, your Muslim, uh, your Muhammad is so confused. How it is 60 meter and how it is 90 mile. There's a huge difference between 90 mile and 60 meters. I mean, why your profit numbers vary? It's like when you buy a product from Amazon, they say pictures can be vary. This is Muhammad. 90 mile and the wife, she will be 30 mile. Which is, I mean, makes sense. I mean, you are 90 mile and you are just, you know, like 30 centimeter wide. You would look like a worm. How you even can stand? But anyway, anyway, so Adam was in heaven and he was 60 meter and then he came down to earth and Mimi Hijab trying to explain what happened, how he, oh, how he became small. It was like 27 meters. And Do you see the numbers they change? Mufti Mink says 18 or 16 or 60. Mimi Hijab, he says, eight, uh, what? 18? Uh, uh, what? I mean, just to change the channel in Islam, you have different numbers. For the same word. Obviously, Islam is not confusing. Okay, tell us what happened, what happened. And they say this is unbelievable and impossible. But before we get to this hadith, let's talk about the Islamic stance on the theory of evolution. Generally speaking, talking about the theory of evolution, Muslims don't have an issue or shouldn't really have an issue with speciation, adaptation, or even uh, evolution of animals. Because I mean, yeah, I'll look at you. Before you debate David Wood, you were a homeless person. You debate with Wood, with, 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 you know, he did not uh, wipe the floor with you he, as he should. You became rich. So this is evolu evolution, you know, this is that the theory is working. Yeah. Uh, you know, okay, what, more. Tell us more. Because we believe that uh, there's nothing explicit in the Quran one way or the other. And I actually done a podcast with Abdullah Al Ajayri. Oh, Abdullah Al Ajayri. Yeah. He, he did the broadcast with Abdullah Al-Ajali. And who is Abdullah Al-Ajali? He don't have high school. High school from Saudi Arabia is equal to no school in anywhere in the world. Well, okay, what, what Abdullah Al-Ajali say? Sheikh Abdullah Al-Ajali is a prominent figure in Saudi Arabia. He's a figure. Uh, who researches these matters and well published in, in this field. Uh -huh. uh, in my discussion with him, this was his opinion. So, which is quite frankly like 99.9% .9 if we look at it from a mass perspective really 99.9% .9 of the theory the uh, the issue we have um we take issue with or the point of evolution the slither of which really diametrically opposes some of the islamic narratives is uh, human evolution now obviously we have a narrative we have a narrative in islam we have a hole in the narrative i mean didn't you learn you know just last time you spoke to your teacher yasser kadhi and now you are not mentioning his name no more since he said there's holes in the narrative. And now you are saying you have a narrative. Why you are not being honest? Why you don't say we have a holes in the narrative? Or we can say we have narratives with hole. And this is why you put your finger in your face, covering some holes. Islam, which is that the Adam alayhi salam was created directly, or this prophet Adam was created directly by Allah. Uh -huh. There's other option, not directly. Maybe Allah, he hired a contractor. It, it, it happened, you know. I mean, Allah is busy, come on. You go to his office, he have all those girls. You think he have time to work in mud? Are you muddying me? Muddying with me? He, he, he created him directly? The Muslim thinking if Allah created Adam directly or not. Ah, look like there is other options.
by God Almighty. And there are many things which differentiate human beings from the rest of the animal kingdom. Morality, the- Like what, like what? I will tell you. Like a human being, like you, they lie. Animals don't. <laughs> Donkeys don't. <laughs> they are more decent. <laughs> Cats don't. Dogs don't. You don't. You are a lying machine. Okay, tell us more. So now all this is, uh, this is all to tell us what? Okay, what happened to Adam? The topic is Adam is 60 meters tall. And what happened now? Because we want to go back to move to Mink. Give us the answer. Uh, the ability to question why, you know, um, this uh, many different uh, language, civilization. and so Ah, we have a language, you know, and we have the best language in the world, by the way. Even Allah, he speaks our language. You know, and this guy is an Egyptian, occupied by the Arab. They forced him to speak Arabic, and now he became their slave. Okay, language, you have a language. What language you speak? So on and so forth. And it couldn't have been the case, we would argue, that we can actually in any way be, uh, be equated uh, to the rest of the animal kingdom, and there's something special. So why Allah is going to judge between two goats fighting in the day of judgment? And why the Quran says that animals are nations like you, and they have Quran? And not only that, they follow the book more than you. Hmm. Let us go to the Quran. I mean, I don't know what Muslims talk about. Those Muslims look like they don't know their book. And if they know it, they ignore it because it's an embarrassment. According to Muhammad, even when two goats fight, Allah will judge between them in the day of judgment because they are Muslims. Chapter 6, which means chapter of An'am, chapter of the animals. There is not a moving living creature on earth, nor a bird that flies with two wings. What did they have for? Ah, okay. But our community like you, we have neglected nothing in the book. Then into their Lord, they should be gathered. So there's a judgment. You are a Hindu. You are literally a Hindu. This is where Muhammad, he got his religion from. Hindus believe that animals, they used to be something else. Reincarnation. So if you are a good person, you come back as uh, something unique, you know, something good. If you are a bad person, you go and you become maybe a cockroach. Or maybe hijab, you know. So, uh, what your what your God is teaching, and if we go and open the interpretation, we will die laughing. That all animals they are going to be judged in the day of judgment for the bad things they do. Once I was debating a Muslim sheikh, and I asked him, "So are you saying to me a mosquito will be judged by Allah for biting me?" He said, "Yes, yes." I said, "But isn't it Allah who made her this way?" She suck blood. <laughs> and you know, when you hear this, you think those people are spiritual and they believe in justice. So they rape you. They take your wife. They take your land. They take your home. They take your church. They take your, your you know, take everything. And now they, there is two good. They fight. We will judge between them in the front of Allah. Look how spiritual they are. Let us go back to Mimi Hijab and see what happened to Adam. All of his introduction. It's just about Adam. Look his hand. You know, I mean, this is very much touching. You know, he's like, what a lovely story. Tell us more. About human beings, لقد كرمنا بدي آدم. Allah says in the Quran uh -huh. that He has dignified the ch children of Adam. So we we don't. Oh, they dignified. We dignified. We dignified how by having sex with the children. By going to the house of my son and flirting with the wife. Dignity. This is dignity, my friend. This is dignity. This is 100% dignity. And when we go to heaven, we are going to F women we never saw. And our penis will be uh, endless. What a dignity penis. Ah, we just a new, got a new term in the dictionary. The dignity penis. And the dignity vagina. So where is Adam now? 
necessarily agree or disagree. We can remain agnostic as to, uh, you know, Darwinian evolution with other animals. But as it relates to uh, the human being, there is something special about the human being. And that is why Allah created human being directly. Yeah. And uh, in this hadith, there's indication that he created Adam in uh, 60 cubits tall. Yeah, yeah, touch your neck, touch it, touch it. You remind me of a, of a little cat I, you know, I used to come in the front of my house and I do that to her neck and she's, she, don't sleep, don't sleep. What? what? Did you take a shower? So he was what? So all this story to tell us what? Go, go. This seems unscientific on many grounds. And I'll tell you what, on three major grounds. Number one is biological. Number two is archaeological. What? Is this what? This is anti Civilization and so on and so forth. And it couldn't have been the case, we would argue, that we can actually in any way be, uh, be equated uh, to the rest of the animal kingdom. And there's something special about human beings. Uh -huh. that, but with Adam, Allah says in the Quran that he has dignified the ch children of Adam. So we, we don't necessarily agree or disagree. We can remain agnostic as to, uh, you know, Darwinian evolution with other animals. But as it relates to uh, the human being, there is something special about the human being. And that is why Allah created human being directly. And uh, in this hadith, there's indication that he created Adam in uh, 60 cubits tall. Now, the question is, this seems unscientific on many grounds. Seems. And I'll tell you what, on three major grounds. Number one is biological. Muslims, they talk about science. Biology. They are the best in biology. That's why Allah he says the sperm come from the backbone of the man. And women have a sperm coming from their breast. And now scientists in Japan, there's a guy, his name is Yama Aidulai Yama, very well known. He found that women, they have a sperm coming from their nipples. That's why women, you will see them, they have something called Nepaline. And Nepaline is coming from Vaseline. And Vaseline coming from Palestine. And Palestine coming from Allah. And Allah is the best of al mudallisin He is the best of lying. What a story. Okay, what? Uh, what? What? Uh, Number two is archaeological. No way. Are you telling me that there is no proof that Adam was 60 tall, 60 meter tall? You Muslims have no proof. Who was going to believe in this? Especially we have the grave of Adam. Peace be upon him. In all Islamic countries, look how long that grave, brother. Long grave. We, 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 you need to take a train, you know. So we don't have any uh, bones, uh, any remain of Adam or any of his children. Yet the Muslims, they have graves for them everywhere. Everywhere. And by the way, this is not even the grave of Adam. This is Amran. This is the grandfather uh, sorry, according to Muhammad, this is the grandfather of Jesus. <laughs> I mean, if, G if the grandfather of Jesus, brother, he was so tall, 260 foot tall, brother. So how tall was Jesus? <laughs> true story, it's true story. Islam is full of it. You know, you like it, you don't like it. I mean, you would love it. Look how his eyes like, you know, he's like he's focusing now. And you, are you kidding me? You are telling me that you Muslims, you don't have any proof that Adam bones was so. So what is this? Look at this. This is different the grave. Tomb, Adam and Eve. Look, they put them together. How beautiful. Look at this grave. And what they have, they are bricks. And they cover them by a, by a green carpet. <laughs> Ah, oh, you know, I mean, Islam is fun. I, I, you know, yeah, we have to. I mean, there is two things these days make you that make you love from your heart. Joe Biden making a speech and the screen is not working, or Mimi Hijab or the Muslim trying to duct tape the stupidity of Muhammad. So here we go. Like, oh, look at this. Even by the way, they have the Muslims. They have the footstep of a Prophet Adam in Sri Lanka. Yes, brother. Because when Allah he sent down Adam. He sent him down to Sri Lanka. And 
I think this is very, uh, I mean, acceptable because, I mean, how you explain to me then that men, they like to drink black tea by nature. You know, all of us, we like black tea. Women, they like green tea. Why? Because Eve, she landed in Jeddah. In Jeddah, there is no tea at all. So what she do, you know, she make tea from the roots of uh, uh, Miswak. Right? Adam, he landed in Sri Lanka. All of us, we are Sri Lankan. From amongst those. Now, if we look at Adam alayhi salam, he came down onto the earth. He was sent to the earth. There's a question. Where did he land? Where? He was, he wasn't just thrown so that suddenly he landed, meaning mm. he dropped, but Allah placed him on the earth. Really? This we find in the narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, where he says, that Adam alayhi salam nazala fil hind. Oops. He came down in what is known as the Indo Pak subcontinent. Mm. Precisely Sri Lanka. There is Sri Lanka. Precisely. And those Christians and Hindus and Jews and atheists don't want to believe in the amazing beautiful stories of a prophet Muhammad how Muhammad he got this information if he is not receiving it from God you tell me hmm? he landed in Sri Lanka and where he was landed in Jeddah a mount there known as Adam's Peak in Sri Lanka there's a mount it's called Adam Peak and I just showed you the picture of his foot you know what I like about this picture by the way uh, that most of people don't think about it. I mean, I, I think about things differently. That this picture, which the Muslim claim it is the uh, the footstep of Adam, let us show you the picture. The unique about it that it's proved that Adam have only one foot. <laughs> so Muhammad and hold on. So Adam he left, he went down to Sri Lanka. And there there is a footprint of Adam. And there's only one one foot. Do you think Adam, he lost his foot in the way when he landed from heaven, brother? <laughs> Do you think that Adam, he was with Taliban war and he lost his other foot in war? I mean, how in the world there is only one print a move to make? You are the one who can give the answer. I mean, the rest are dummy. The guy, he left only one footprint. What happened to the other one? He was jumping like a kangaroo. Boing, 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 boing. Hey, Adam, stop, man. What are you doing? I cannot use the other foot. Why? Because I want to live like a kangaroo. But even kangaroo used two foot. Idiot. Just use two feet and jump. No problem. No, I cannot. One foot at the time. Because simply, I am a bird. Don't you see those white birds? They stand in one foot and the other foot is up. Yeah, they do that because they want to rest, but they use the other foot and there's that time. Exactly. So I take one foot up, I put the other foot down, and this is why I don't leave any footprint except one footprint. Because I am following the oneness of Allah, and we should only put one footprint everywhere. Uh, do you use your five fingers, uh, Adam? Uh, what? Do you use your five fingers or only one finger when you talk about Allah? Yes, exactly. We Muslims, we give a finger to Allah. We Have you seen the Muslims? When they say Tawheed, in the, the, the Shahada, 
and they give Allah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy you know you will see every Muslim suddenly he is giving a finger to his look at this look at this how beautiful you know yeah I mean I don't know what this finger is meant for but I hope you don't go in his nose so until now, you know, we are learning about Islam, that Islam is so beautiful, full of nice stories. Uh, but uh, we need to go back a little bit to Mimi Hijab, because Mimi Hijab, he looks serious. Look at this. Explain this matter. He's working so hard to duct tape his prophet, and he is out of duct tape as the rest of the Muslims. And when a story is very much embarrassing, they say the story is da'if, which means eh, we don't accept it. Even though it's written in their book, written by them, uh, uh, preserved by them, transmitted by them. Uh, but today, and it was accepted by them all those centuries, but today, in order to learn away from something embarrassing, they say it's da'if, but even da'if is accepted. But anyway, uh, maybe Hijab, where we stopped? And or paleontological, we could say as well, from a fossil record perspective. Yeah. And number three, uh, looking at the kind of uh, disparity in sizes, if we do assume that there was a human being of uh, such great magnitude in terms of size, how can we explain the fact how? Uh, that human beings are like, uh, give or take, you know, six foot tall, give or take, you know, a, half a meter or whatever it may be, or more, right? But how can you explain this huge disparity in the fact that you're saying that you believe in Adam, who's 27 meters tall and, and, and a human being now, which is, you know, typically anything between five foot five to six foot five. And obviously there are extremities on, <laughs> on both sides. Of that. Was, 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 people that are taller than six foot five, like myself, and people that are shorter than five. I want to know how your wife should understand what you are saying. Hey, honey, what do you want to eat? Are you talking to yourself? What is the heck is that? Are you talking to yourself? And uh, okay, what is the answer now? All this blah 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 blah, you know. Every two seconds you add certain like big English words. And what is the answer? Why Adam is 60 meters tall? And why we are not? Give us the answer. I foot five, like uh, many, many people. Hmm. So here there's two parts of the hadith which we need to pay attention to, uh, which is the first there's two possibility. Always in Islam, there's many possibility. Like it's possible that maybe hijab. Is smart. It's possible that he is a stupid. It's possible that he is both. It's possible that he have a secret wife. It's possible that he is not even married. It's possible that he is not a male. It's possible that he is male and female. It's possible that he don't have two nipples. He have a three. It's possible that he is not even a Muslim. It's possible. There's a lot of possibility in Islam. Okay, give us the answer, man. That's part of the hadith. It talks about that Allah created Adam uh, uh, 60 uh, cubits tall. And in terms of hadith, there are some narrations which don't mention this 60 cubits. Mm. And that don't, the, 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 yeah, they mention 90 miles. Okay. The, there are some narrations that do mention the 60 cubits. But we don't say that just because there are some narrations that don't mention the 60 cubits. Uh, but the same excuse you use for other hadith. You say other hadith doesn't say that, so we don't accept it. Now it's okay. Hapakreto, uh, you are. Hapakreto. You are, but potato. Cubits that the narrations that do mention these cubits are erroneous. That makes no sense. Actually, uh, uh. Uh, this this doesn't. And some people have a, a Muslim talking about what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, this is the religion of sense, sense of humor at least. <laughs> You will have a penis of endless penis, it makes sense. You will have the power of 100 men of sex, it makes sense. Each time you sleep with the woman, you open her private part, Allah will close it again to make her virgin, it makes sense. You will... You <laughs> the prophet, he went to the heaven in the top of a flying donkey, and he, nobody saw him, and nobody witnessed him, and not even his wife, even his wife, she said, uh, 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 his body was here. <laughs> it makes sense. And when they ask him, Muhammad, describe for us Jerusalem. You said you went to Jerusalem, right? He started describing, and you will see in the hadith, it says, 
many they left Islam after he started describing because all his description for Jerusalem it turned to be false. Even the most close person to Muhammad, he's, he, you know, he said, suspicion came to my heart when I heard this. But go more, tell us more. Yeah, don't talk about the lizard, please. The lizard who tried to burn Abraham, it make a lot of sense. You Muslims are people who believe only in things make sense. I mean, the lizard is blowing wind at Abraham to burn him. Look at him. He looked like a dragon. Dangerous creature. Yeah, Mr. Sense of a humor. Go ahead. I've attempted to argue uh, that this means that this should be uh, disbanded. No, it doesn't mean that's not how the Hadith science works. Oh. So that's the first thing. Other people say the second part of the Hadith, which talks about uh, that the, 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 the creation is, um, is, is, is becoming smaller and smaller until now. They found it problematic because the, even Hajar himself, he mentions how could it be the case that this is happening, right? The, the, and we can see Ad and Thamud's uh, kind of uh, indwellings, the, the archaeolog archaeological remnants of their indwellings, and we can see that their houses and the, you know, the doors and so on were not so tall. And he assumed, and without, by the way, nas and evidence, that uh, Ad and Thamud were closer to Adam than they were to us human beings. And obviously, the, the only real evidence we have anything between Nuh and Adam alayhi uh, salam is there's no evidence I mean there's only uh, the only evidence we have is no evidence <laughs> you know like uh, uh, you know uh, hello uh, yes can I talk to the evidence department yes uh, evidence department how many evidence we have sir we are in the evidence department we have no evidence Oh, okay, so why you call it evidence department? Because we don't have evidence. But, but if you don't have evidence, why you are the department of evidence? Sir, what is my language you don't understand? We are the evidence department because we have no evidence. I, okay, I get it, but why you call yourself evidence department if you don't have any? Okay, let me explain to you. We are the evidence department because we don't have evidence. What's wrong with you? So, the, the only evidence we have, we have no evidence? Can you say that again? It's a problem when you move this video, a jump. And Adam alayhi uh, salam is, there's no evidence. I mean, there's only uh, Israeliyat or kind of biblical narrations. So, Biblical narration, it says that Adam was 60 uh, meter tall. <laughs> what this guy is <laughs> Potentially, he was using those to kind of... Uh, raise his eyebrow, but he did not say that this hadith was mu'allal or defective, as many believe. He was raising eyebrows, you know, the scholars, they can't even trust their books. He was raising eyebrows. So when something looks so stupid, what we do? Very simple. Raise your eyebrows. What if you don't have any? That he did. Now, having oh, because of nas reasons or co content reasons, mm. going now forward to answering the contentions, there are variations of this hadith which refer to fissama. Okay, that this was in the heaven, not uh. heaven as in Jannah, but fissama. Uh. Now, obviously, if you look at the Quranic cosmos, guys, not in Jannah, fissama. Adam, he was not in Jannah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. One day I will die laughing, you know. <laughs> he said, the stupid Mimi Hijab, he said, that Adam, he was not in Jannah, he was Fissama.
<laughs> Mimi, it's not your lucky day. So why the Quran in chapter 25 says Adam was in Jannah, you idiot? Let us go to the Quran. People will die laughing at your stupidity. So Adam, he was in the sky, not in Jannah. Oh boy. So those verses say what? As an example, not limited. Huh? Oh, Adam, live and your wife in the Jannah. According to you, Adam was 60 meter tall, not in Jannah. This is the Muslim translation, it says paradise. We, we can switch, see if somebody use even Arabic, because sometimes Muslim, they use the word as it is in Arabic. <clears throat> uh, to avoid... Uh, They use Jannah here, or they don't use Jannah, let's see. But anyway, you can uh, see it in our, you know? Yeah, okay. Uh, this guy, he says, garden. Mm. Yeah, it, it says Jannah. Anyway, so as you see, this potato, he claimed to have knowledge, and he's going to refute and answer. So Adam, he was 60 meter tall, not in Jannah, in the sky. Mm. He was a bird. He was just a bird. Etymology, heaven, al-Jannah, is above. Okay, because obviously we know that the Prophet was taken there in the Salat al Maraj. Oh, Adam was not in Jannah. The Jannah is above. Adam was in the sky. <laughs> when the stupid, he should know that there is tons of verses in the Quran saying that Adam specifically was in Jannah. So it could be the case that this height and this mega size of 27 meters is specific to Jannah and there's nothing uh -huh. wrong linguistically in believing that okay because obviously we believe that Adam alayhi salam he started his journey yes in heaven I mean we have a whole narrative where he was in a completely different uh, okay now he is uh, fixing it so he was in heaven now okay so why you are saying that it was in the sky what happened in the sky place and then Allah he sent him down to the earth okay he sent him down to the earth yes he's created from the elements of the earth but he was in many ways an extraterrestrial <laughs> because he came from a completely different dimension and he came to uh, this earth now in that transition period could he have shrunk that make an explanation it's very possible that he shrunk and actually this is explained to us why mufti Ming saying that when you go to heaven you will be 60 meter tall. You will be expanded again. That now we have a full image. So you get out, you shrunk. You get in, you get bigger. So Adam, he get out of heaven, he shrunk. Adam is getting a human being like us now, going to the heaven of Allah, we expand. How beautiful. Look like the standard height in heaven for Allah. He want everybody to be 60 cubits. Nobody is taller, nobody is shorter. Everybody have the same face. They look like Joseph. Everybody have the same age as the age of Isa, 33 years old. And everybody is 60 meter height. Mm. Uh, now we go back to our friend here. The hadith which speaks of the uh, tent or the abode that a person may have, obviously if you wish for it, you will be having hold on, 70 hold on. or 90. You will be brought up to the age of 33, a certain height, Situna Dira'an. It's translated by some as 18 meters and some as 60 meters. Whatever it is, it's very big. I was reading the hadith which speaks of the uh, tent or the abode that a person may have, obviously, if you wish for it, you will be having it, and it will be there for you anyway if you'd like to dwell in it. It is made of a pearl. You know, when you see a pearl, what's the Your tent will be made of a pearl. Your tent will be made of a pearl. 
What is the size of a pearl? What's the size of a pearl? Can anyone, you know, show me a size of a pearl roughly? Yeah, uh, just to grab one of your testicles. You're very small. Yeah, what? Anyone seen one? Yes, there you are. Someone saying this size. You see this size here. Exactly what I'm saying, you know. And I've, I've perhaps heard of something slightly bigger. You know, it can fit in your hand. I don't talk about that. The pearl will be 60 meters tall. Oof, 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 oof. So you are now 60 meters tall. And the house is 60 meters high. I mean, can't Allah make it one meter higher so your head will not touch the, the ceiling? I mean, how this is even a comfortable uh, room? I am 60 meter tall. And now the, the tent is 60 meter tall and it's made from pearl, which means it's not even flexible. How am I going to stand up? Supposedly now he made it big, right? But no, it's small. I mean, imagine if you enter a room and your, your head is hitting the ceiling. And this is supposedly a heavenly design. You know, if the ceiling is 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 a uh, is a seventy meter tall and you are sixty, okay, you have still one meter. I mean, you can breathe. But being sixty meter and the and the room is sixty meter, that means he put you inside a box, inside a coffin. Uh, look at the finger. And Abdul, where do you get the number sixty meter tall? I thought your prophet he says sixty mile tall. In some hadith, it says that the the, the size of uh, of the pearl is from the distance of Damascus to Yemen. Look how small your tent. Brothers and sisters, chapter 55, verse number 72, you go to heaven. Allah will give you a tent. Bedouin, you know, Muhammad is a Bedouin. So he, you know, he, he think about everything as a tent. And what is the tent? How the tent look like? It's beyond your imagination. It's made from pearls. And those women who Allah will give you to boom, boom them, they will be jailed, restrained inside those tents. And they are so huge, so big. I find it very funny that the tent is 60 mile wide and 60 meter high. 60 mile by 60 mile. Let me see if I can find you in Al-Bukhari because I think there's a hadith in Al-Bukhari. Speak about that. Let us see if we can get lucky and we find the hadith in English. That will be fun. Oh boy. Oh mommy. Oh mommy, my tent is blue. My tent is blue. Oh mommy. 60 mile. 60 mile the size of you. Oh mommy. So listen to this. How beautiful. Abu Bakr blah 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 from the authority of blah 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 that the prophet blah 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 he said in paradise will be a tent made of a single hollywood pearl i like it hollywood i mean i don't want to dig in it of a single hollywood pearl the breath of which would be 60 miles from all sides and there will be live a family of each corner. Whoa.
Family? What do you mean family? Fast translation. Those women. There's women. In the, uh, you know, I, I, I want to I wanna ask the Muslims, how in the world that can be true? How it is 60 miles from all sides? And then there is women in every corner. In order to have 60 mile from all, I mean, I mean, are we talking about a square or we are talking about a circle? Let it go. And would not be able to see the believer who goes around them. And other would not be able to see the believer who goes around them. Others? Others who? I thought you are alone in the tent. I thought this is your tent. So who is others? And this is Hadith is Sahih, as you see. So now we have a dimension of the tent which Allah will provide to you. 60 mile long from every corner and 60 meter high. I mean, why Allah is so cheap with the height and so generous with the width? Any Muhammadan can give us uh, a hinge from the bench? What the heck? You see, when I say to you, today we are going to show you beautiful stories from the Quran. Don't you agree that those stories are beautiful? So we discovered that Adam, when he came down, he shrunk. When we go up to heaven, we extend again. This is sound like the movie, it's called what? Alice in the Wonderland. She ate from the cheese and she got bigger, smaller first. Alice in the Winterland. Uh, eating the cheese. By the way, when you enter heaven, in case you do not know, the first thing Allah will give you, you will drink a drink. And that will make you extremely white and that will make you extremely tall. If you don't believe me, we can show you the reference. Or we can play a video. <laughs> oh boy. She ate from the cake, she got so big. Oh, I cannot wait. All right, let us continue with the drama. Go ahead, uh, Mufti Mink. Oh, mommy, mommy, when we can buy your song in tone, in, I tune in. You do not need to buy my songs. Yeah, they are for free. Uh, are you kidding me? Uh, here we go. I'm just thinking it for you for free. I don't get paid for this. Am I getting paid? My, you know, here we go. You guys who are enjoying where you work and nobody care. And even you get my books for free. And even you download my books in English for free. This is how much people appreciate me. Anyway. This is the war today. Continue, Mifti Mink. Forget about the drama. Going high. Imagine what type of a pearl that must be. Subhanallah. And it's a tent that you can go into. So why we say this is described in the hadith to show you it's beyond your imagination. The Quran says, Fiha ma anfus, in it is whatever is desired by the souls. Wataladhu al ayun. You see, ladi. What does it mean? Something that's tasty, isn't it? It's ladi. Taladhu al ayun is a description that doesn't have an English to translate it, to be honest with you. Because I would say, for example, whatever is tasty to your eyes. But the reality is, you don't taste with your eyes. Do you taste with your eyes? No, we taste with the tongue. 
But whatever you see, you want it, you feel like having it, it's already there, it's sweet to the eye, it's attractive to it, it's yours. In, 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 in this world, what's attractive to your eye is not yours, always. See, what's attractive to your eye, whether it's a vehicle or something, look, we, we're trying to be decent here. <laughs> we are trying to be decent here. We are trying to be decent here. We are, we are what? Why you are trying? Whatever your eyes wish, whatever is tasty for your eyes, you will have. We are trying to be decent here. That mean, if you see a woman of anybody or even a man, in fact, I have many debate with Muslims, and they say, one of them, he shout at me, he says, what's wrong with you? What, what part you don't understand? In heaven, everything is possible. Whatever you desire. Whatever you desire. We are trying to be decent. Like this, this guy is more decent than his prophet. Muhammad, he said, that in heaven there is a bazaar no buying or selling in it except pictures and if the man he liked the picture he entered to if it This is Islam. We are trying to be decent here. Whatever your eyes see, you wish, you want to taste, you desire, you get it. Inna fil jannati suqan. ما فيها بيع ولا شراء إلا الصور من النساء والرجال فإذا اشتهى الرجل صورة دخل فيها وإن فيها لمجمع للحور In those images there's حور You see Zakir Naik he says حور can be male and female He based it in this because it says male and female here so here it says that in heaven, <clears throat> in paradise, there's a market of images. And those images, look at the first translation. Where is the word men? Okay, images of men. No, actually it says, it says, it says here we go. I thought they took it off. There's nothing bought or sold except images of men and women. And if a man, he like an image, he will enter into it and become his. This is Islam. Homosexuality is part of the heaven of Allah. Images of men and women. Who is the customer? He's a man. The customer is a man. If a man he desire, if a man he desire, I'm showing it to you in Arabic, I'm showing it to you in English, and Muslims have no excuse. Let us see.
I think the story is clear. This is a very sexual, and Muhammad is trying to tempt people sexually. Uh, the same as he said, attack the Romans so we can get the blonde girls. So believe in me, so you can get women just for sex. Allah created them for you, even in the heaven. There's a playboy market where pictures of men and women displayed for you. And if you like an image, you enter it and you have sex with it. Whatever the man desire, you see, the one who desire is a man. Desire what? Images of men and women. It's so clear. And now for sure the Muslim will say to you, this is da'if, because it's an embarrassment. Isn't it obvious that this is a very satanic cult? Heavily focused in sexuality? And isn't it obvious that this religion is the religion of a horny puppies? I don't want to use the word dogs. Trying to drive you into belief by desire of sex? Why Muhammad is making such a promise and why this man is talking about the description of heaven in such a way? Whatever your eyes want to taste, you will have. Somebody saying to me, there is somebody want to call me, so I will open Skype. All right. My Skype is open. Let us see if there is any text. It's loading. Uh, what is the name of the person who tried to contact me? Let us see here. Okay. Let him call. Somebody he said he have an imam to call me. What is the, the guy who said to me, there is somebody, what is, what is the name of the body? What is the name of the person in Skype? I have many text messages. Night for Christ, where is the, what is the name? We have somebody is saying to me, you are scared. I'm always scared. Are you kidding me? If my wife in heaven, her ass would be one mile, that will scare the hell of any man. One fart and you are burned, especially if you are smoking a cigarette. <clears throat> the prophet of one mile ass women. Who can create such an ass except the ass god? Hello? He hang up. Okay. Somebody saying to me, I am a scholar. I am Sheikh from Pakistan. Okay. We are trying to contact the scholar from Pakistan. I like it when a Muslim he call himself a scholar. And what what a scholar he knows? He knows the size of the tent. Okay, let me try to search his name in Skype. But why he don't add me that he could not find me? Okay, let us see. All right, let us see. <laughs> oh, 
oops, something wrong. Call failed. I added your friend. Is he online? I tried to contact your friend. I could not call him. All right, let's see the phone one. Yeah, for now, we don't have any Muslim try to contact us. So this is what Islam is about. Islam is silly. Islam is stupid. Islam is not for a mature human being. Islam is not, even doesn't make even sense for a kid. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, this is very laughable. What this guy is talking about, a tent made from rubies, 60 meter high. And what does that mean exactly? <laughs> any, any Muslim can tell me why this is something, why this is heaven. And now inside the tent, there is no windows. And there is women who they are locked in and they cannot leave. And their legs is open wide for me. And each time you F them, they do sing for you. Let me block this guy, he's an idiot. We call him, he never answer. Any Muslim? This is the beautiful heaven. So Allah will make you white. Allah will make you so tall. Allah will make you look like Joseph. What if I don't like to be like Joseph? What is the problem the way you look like? Allah is not satisfied with your look like, you know, the design you have is just ugly. I'm going to do uh, some Photoshop for you. Maybe your wife will not like you in heaven because if you go in heaven the same way you look right now, disgusted. What does that mean? This is now what will make me believe. Women I never met, they are just ready for me to have sex with me. They are horny all the time. And not only that, Muhammad, he claimed that a Muslim woman, she will keep you have orgasm for 70 years. 70 years orgasm. If the orgasm alone is 70 years, the sex is how long? How spiritual this religion is? How touching the vagina it is? It's a vaginical religion. You go to heaven, you will become a sexual machine. All your life, effing, coming. Effing, coming. No time to watch TV. No time for a sport. Well, yeah, you are in the gym. Effing, what are you kidding me? And then when you have orgasm, your orgasm is 70 years. Hey Allah, how come you could not make Muhammad give his wife's orgasm for a minute? The wife of Muhammad, when she heard that a woman she have this charge, she said to her husband Muhammad, do women even have that? <laughs> I mean, and, and Muslim, they claim Allah, he sent Muhammad a dish of shish kebab. Uh, he, Muhammad, he said he was the most weak, you know, weak person in, in earth. And when it's come to a, a sexual intercourse. So Allah, he sent him a dish of kebab. Look, Allah, he cannot fix him. He have to send something. I mean, it made sense. Make a lot of sex, not sense. <laughs> so he sent him a dish of kebab. This is the power of kebab. How many of you men now are going to go to the store and buy kebab? Hmm? Look what happened to Prophet Muhammad. 
His penis was not even standing, even if you play the anthem for it. Penis, Muhammad, come on, stand up. You know, the wife is naked, took off her panty. Come on, do something. Zip. Come on, let us let us do Ruqya. You know, Ruqya, the Muslim, they believe in Ruqya. They start reciting Quran. Bismillah, Rahim, and the penis sleeping more. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Shaitan or Rajim, Alif Lamim, Potato, Tomato, Amin. Okay, penis, not, not moving. Muhammad, he tried everything. He tried every trick in the book of Boom Boom. He even eat cockroaches as they do in uh, Thailand. I was walking in the street in Thailand and I went, I, I look, she, what the heck is that on the table? She have literally cockroaches. She said, uh, she does, she speak, uh, you know, they, they think everybody is Russia in Thailand, by the way. So she spoke to me some Russian, I don't know what, uh, she said, uh, so I speak English. She said, uh, sir, boom, boom. This is boom, boom. Ah, cockroaches for boom, boom. And there is a lot of donkeys. They eat cockroaches. So hoping they can do boom, boom. Okay. You go to the White House. It's full of it. Maybe you can eat Joe Biden for us. Um Salam said, Um Salim, look at me. Everybody is Um in Islam. Um Salama, Um Salim, Um Muhammad, Um Batato, Um Mimi Hijab, Um Ali Dawa, Um. What is her name? Haram. You cannot say her name. So why you say Aisha? Um Salama said that Um Salim said. Um mean mother. Okay, now who is Salama and who is Um? Anyway, let it go. Oh, Allah Messenger. Allah does not refrain from saying the truth. Uh, truth about what? Just wait. Is it obligatory for a woman to take a bath after she got nocturnal discharge? What she got? Imagine you are a prophet of Allah and you are at home peacefully taking a suntan bath in the yard. And the woman, she entered the yard. She put her hand over the door. She left one leg up. She lay her back and her long hair looking at you. Say, Prophet, Allah is not shy to tell the truth. What I should do if I have a very good orgasm? Do I need to take a bath? The Prophet, he said, okay, hold on, I need water. <clears throat> What is the question again? Okay, Prophet of Allah. Yesterday I saw a hot dream and my hands went somewhere. Then I have a nocturnal, nocturnal I mean, I knocked the floor with it. I knocked the ceiling. I knocked everything around me. And I have orgasm. Should I take a shower, Prophet? Prophet, he says, Aisha, more water. Thank you for the question. This is a very serious question. Okay. Aisha, just give me, give me water again. Can you repeat the question again? Because one more time, I'm going to have orgasm too. <laughs> he said, yes, yes. If she notice a water, where in her vagina? Uh, Muslim trying to be a polite, like Mimi, like like Mufti Minky says, we are trying to be decent here. If she notice a water, i.e. discharge, Umm Salama, the wife of Muhammad, she said, does a woman get discharge? What? They never have this charge. Does the women, do the women have this charge? What Muhammad was doing in bed? Women who slept with him, they don't have any discharge. Never. Ever.
you hate my joke? I don't know, you know, I mean, you hate my joke, but you stay. You remind me of a Muslim woman. She sent me an email a long time ago. She's saying, so what if your voice is so sexy? I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Is that you? The same person? So you hate my jokes and you are staying. Huh. Sound very Islamic. And logical. May Allah bless you. Hmm. Well, this guy, he changed the name now. He called, tried to call me again. If I call him, he won't answer. I will give him one more call. Let us see. If you don't answer this time, I will back him. Whatever the name come. Do we have any Muslim claim to be a scholar, a cleric, potato, tomato, there to call me? Anyone, especially from those who hate my jokes. I did not say a joke. Your religion is a joke. Your prophet is a joke. A woman, she is coming to a strange man, asking him if he should wash her vagina. What if a woman, she asked the woman, the wife of Muhammad, and the wife of Muhammad, she asked the man. Can she do that? Is it like emergency? Was she dropping water from her private part when she came to the Prophet? In fact, the Muslims, they used to go and do tawaf around the Kaaba and their penises were dripping semen. This is how holy this religion is. Let us see if we can find you. The Hadith. Let us see. Where is the hadith? Ah. Look at this. Look how beautiful it is. Look at look at this. Look. Look at the beautiful religion. Look, 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 look. Hmm. The remark should we go to Mina with our penises dripping with the prostic fluid? A Muslim, he made a video, says, there's nobody in the world is documented as our Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> it's documented, brother. <laughs> it is what? Documented, and this is Sahih. Very much Sahih. Hmm? What a wonderful prophet, what a holy Kaaba, what a holy God, what a holy shit. Different hadith, it says. فَنَخْرُجُ إِلَيْهَا وَمَذَاكِرُنَا تَقْطُرُ مَنِيًّا 
we go into it and our penis is a dripping semen, sperm. What they were doing around the Kaaba. What exactly they were practicing around the Kaaba. Somebody asked him what the difference between Arabic and Aramaic. Aramaic is the mother language for all languages. Uh, Arabic is, is, a, is a collection of languages. It's not a language by itself. Now, by time, it became developed more. Yeah, and then uh, uh, non-Arab, they put grammar for the Arabic. <laughs> this is one of the funny things about the Arabic language. You know, they say to you, Arabic language is so beautiful, right? And then you find out that even the one who put the grammar for Arabic is not an Arab. There's no grammar. Missed up language. This is why you see when a Muslim, he tried to explain the Quran. He can't explain the Quran. The Quran is so stupid, especially when it's written, there's no dots. There's no valves. You do not know what the word mean because it can be anything. One dot can change everything. But there was no dot at that time. Uh, I'm looking at now. There is the Mr. Imam. He did not call us. The one who want to bring us the Imam is not here. Nobody is texting. All right. So I think we have enough for today with the beautiful stories about Islam. And I know that most of you are going to convert now because you will go to heaven. How many of you like to be 60 meter tall or 90 mile tall? Let us be honest. Isn't it this is your dream? To be a very famous basketball player? I mean, who is going to win against you? Can you imagine how many basketball team they would love to hire you and give you millions of dollars. Even you don't even need to play. You don't even need to jump. You do not even need to move. You have to bend down. Actually, you have to sleep in your belly so you can play with them. You have to sit in your ass so you can play basketball. You are already at least 60 meters tall or 90 miles tall. Brothers and sisters, this is so beautiful. We shared with you some beautiful stories about the heaven of Allah. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope Allah will bless your penis if you convert to Islam. We'll make it endless. So at least I can connect your penis to my antenna and receive more channels. At least your penis one day will become useful. It's now useless. Maybe you can use it to you connect the internet to seven galaxies. Maybe we can use your penis to connect the cable from the earth all the way to heaven. We do not need a spaceship. People can go inside your penis, come from the other side. You swallow them, you have orgasm, you come at the end of the world. How many of us love to say or to see a wife, she have one mile ass. How beautiful. That to break my heart. And she's going to break your chest, especially if she sit on you. What chest? She's going to, 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 to smash you. One mile ass. Why Muhammad is so big in sizes, man? I mean, what, like, what's wrong with like one meter ass? I mean, okay, he, she is now, okay, hold on. So, according to Mufti Mink, he said 60 meters tall, the man. What about the women? How the ass is one mile. And then she will be waiting for you in the, in the, in the, in the, in the tent, which is high, the high of it is 60 meters. I mean, she can't get in. Her ass alone is, is one mile. I'm afraid, after what I told you, many of you will not stay as a Christian or a Hindu or a Buddha. It's time for a change. Mufti Mink, what do you think? Hmm. 
Hmm. It's not. That's deep. It's happening. It's happening, brother. You have the best, and then suddenly you look, you see something, you don't have it, it's happening. Well, you know what? Uh, it just happened to me now. That, what if I'm a stupid like you? I would be more happy, maybe. It's happening. Because when you are stupid and you believe in those fairy tale stories, I mean, life is a lot easier. You don't think heavy, you don't uh, study hard, you don't question, just listen for the fairy tale stories and close your eyes and dream about penises, heaven, women, vagina, legs is up, boom, boom, all day, you know? Eh. Yeah, it's happening. To be smart is not a good thing. It's painful. A foolish man, he will live better. You don't care what's happening in the world. It's foolish. Life for a foolish man is the same as a rabbit. Give him some carrot. Give him a shelter to sleep. He's happy. He's okay. Islam trying to wake up the animal inside you. Animal is driven by two things. Food and sexual desire. The second you show the animal the food, his saliva will start coming. Even he did not even touch the food yet. The saliva of the dog will start dripping from his mouth. Even he did not even eat the food yet. Same for sex. Any female is a, is a female. And what the Muhammadan trying to make you be to turn into an animal who you don't think about who oh, those women I'm going to sleep with. Why God in the Bible he created Adam and Eve, not Adam and 72 Eves or a billion Eve? Because by the way, the number of women in heaven, the lowest number is 72. This is for the bad Muslim. Many people think that this is the number of a Muslim. No. The heaven of Islam have 100 floor. Every floor have different reward. The higher you go, the more you will be rewarded supposedly, and the number will change. Someone wanna talk to me, my friend, what I would do? What I can do? Let him text me in Skype. If he is a Muslim, I will take, I will call him. No, no need for drama. Anyone says in the chat, I want to talk to you to tell him, text Christian Prince. We have the info. We have the sky. What I would do? Don't tell me those things. Somebody want to talk to you. If somebody is serious to talk to me, he will go. My Skype is open. So those dummies trying to tempt you thinking that you are a low IQ person, thinking that you are so stupid to the point to believe in such a garbage, thinking that you are just a silly man or women who have no dignity. There is no sound, you did not hear it. All right, we will play it again. Sorry for that. Not yours always. What's attractive to your eye, whether it's a vehicle or something, look, we, we're trying to be decent here. <laughs> whether it's a vehicle or whatever else it is, subhanAllah, it's not necessarily yours. It's not yours. And the, 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 one of the weaknesses that show that this world is nothing is that if you have the best of something, within a minute you see something that you might now think is better, 
Suddenly yours is nothing. Here you notice that Christianity and Islam, they are not only uh, f like far from each other, we totally oppose everything because heaven, you know, when they ask Jesus about who will marry this woman in heaven, who she will be with, she have many husbands. He said he and she, they will not get married. They will be the same as angels. Here you see that not only we have different ethic, Islam is unethical, zero ethic. It's an animal religion. Have the ethic of an animal where everything I want is what I want. Oh, I'm hungry. I jump in a goat. I kill the goat. I want to eat. If I cannot find a goat, a wolf can attack another wolf and eat the wolf. I saw a video in YouTube. They have a live webcam of uh, what, what this uh, bird they call it. It's not an eagle, you know, it's like uh, it have a lot of uh, hair, like a lot, a lot of uh, feathers, but it's the same kind of eagle. I forgot the name, you know, in, in English. So the baby, one of the baby of the bird, after he came from the egg, it came from the egg, lived for some time, obviously it's a good size, and died. Then the mothers and the baby, they were eating the other baby. The mother and the baby, the other babies, you know, they are eating the baby which is died. Uh, Falcon, Hawk, no, no, no. It, uh, maybe I can. Okay, it's it's like it looked like this actually. Uh, I don't know the name. Hold on. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it, it uh, let me. I found the picture. I, I searched in Arabic to show you. <clears throat> All right. So, the baby died. The baby died. The mother and the other babies. We are eating, if we can use the word sibling. This is what Islam is about. It's about how to be selfish. You don't worship God because you believe in God. You don't worship God because you love God. You don't worship God because you love holiness. You believe in God because he will give you penis. You believe in God because of a sexual reward. You don't believe in God because God is good. You believe in God because your God is a sexual vendor. He tempts you with money, gold and silver. In case you do not know, the Quran promised the Muslims that in heaven they will be wearing Clothing made in Persia. And then you ask yourself, at that time, the Persian, they were not Muslims. Why Allah is talking about, it's like saying Gucci at that time. Expensive silk made in Persia. Famous one. Why Muhammad is using such a term, claiming that Allah is using it? Why Muhammad saying he will be reclining in the couches? Because those Arab Bedouin didn't know what couches is. They dream about it. Fruits, they don't have fruits. They have only palm date. Desert is so dead. Life is so harsh. Even he promised them banana. And from every fruit, there is two pears. 
which is very funny. But Muhammad, he stuck with the chat, with the with the term, because he was trying to make a, like a, a, rob, a rob song. So he have to add at the end A and that will make it two. Otherwise, it make no sense. From every orange to from every apple to what about five? You just told us we will have whatever we wish. And now you are telling you are telling me my buffet is limited. Where is the promise? You will have two spring of water. Okay, what does that mean? What I would do with two spring of water? What about one? Maybe one is dirty, the other one is not. But Muhammad is stuck with the A N at the end, making Arabic rap, supposedly, very funny one. So he have to make it two, two. So every there he says two, 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 two in this two, two of everything. And then he says to you that you will have women who nobody open their humans. This is heaven. The God is describing for you what is inside the women's vagina. No men nor genie if them. Not only that, you see when the Muslim they make videos, they avoid the sensitive issues. As an example, we heard this guy saying that you will have a tent in the heaven. But the Quran says you will have two heaven. <laughs> Can I be in two heavens in the same time? It says two, not two garden, two Jannah. Two Jannah. Muhammad is stuck with the number two. And the funny, he just said that Allah will give you two spring of water. Right? Read it. Here, verse number 50. You go down a little bit, he repeat the same. But you just promised me to a spring of water. You, you just said that. Here you will notice, by the way, that somebody placed this verse in the wrong location. This verse should be right after verse number 50, where he says there is two spring of water, and then he says, gushing water from. Right? But because the Muhammadan, they did not have the Quran, they collected the Quran as even they, they agree. They place the verse far away from the previous verse. Otherwise, the verse here does not make any sense. Look at this. Here he's speaking about the garden. Here he speak about the color. Here we go back to speak about the gushing water, but this is before, long before. And then those Arabian men, they love to control women. They are dictators. They are dictators even over men. Like if you live in the Middle East, you have to be a dictator. You can be a small one, big one, depend on your position in the society. So a poor man, he dictates his family because he don't have authority. He is not strong enough to dictate others. But this is a society of dictators. So you go from the lowest, a poor man, he dictate the wife, the children, he beat them, he harass them. He practiced his manhood on them to prove that he is a man. And then he go outside. He is a rabbit because other man, he dictate him. And the chain continue. Everybody dictate somebody is weaker than him. And then you reach the end where is the king or the president. And all of them, they are justice in the Middle East like Muhammad.
dictator. When Muslims used to come to Muhammad, he used to beat them. He used to beat them and to curse them. Why? Because he is a man of justice. When people start questioning what kind of a man he claimed to be the man of God, he is beating his men. He claimed that he made a condition on Allah. Let me show you the hadith. He made a condition on Allah that anyone he do beat from the Muslims unjustly, as usual, Allah will reward him. Look at this. How many times we heard the Muhammad and they say, Prophet was amazing justice, he is a perfect man, he have the perfect ethic. Here we go. You go to Muhammad, he beat the hell of you unjustly, and he used foul mouth, foul language, cursing people. He wiped their back unjustly, just because he's angry. And then, when people, they start making fun of Muhammad, saying to the Muslims, what kind of a prophet, he do that to you? Especially, you are saying that he is doing it for no reason. You did not do wrong. Muhammad, he made this statement saying, admitting that he is beating them unjustly, cursing them, using filthy language to their mother and their father, the F word claiming that he have an agreement with Allah. Don't be upset. I say the F word to your mother. I did wipe your back, whip your back. It's a blessing. Each time I beat you, Allah will reward you. Okay, let's see. All right, we have a Muslim. <clears throat> okay, I'm trying to call him. <coughs> when I tried to call him, he said he have a technical problem. <coughs> Sorry for coughing. Well, I'm trying to call him. He's not answering, my friend. Tell him to be online. It says he is not online. Uh, let me try one more. Okay, let him. Let me. Let him text me when he is ready. Even though I was getting ready to go, but we will take him. See, it says here, he is not online. I tried to call him many times, no answer. Let us do it one more time. No, it's not working. I am in all preview and still learning sometime. I had something weird, I don't know. I'm trying to uh, question.
Well, tell him you want to call me or what? I mean, you know, I don't know what is this. Tell him if you want to call, call. I try to call him. Tell him to call me. I added him so he can call. Usually I don't add people. I just added him so he can get connection. So as you see, Muhammad is a very unfair, unjust, and he have a very extreme bad ethic. And even when obviously he is doing the wrong, he claimed that he is doing it for your sake. When Muhammad, he screw around with you, being unjust, beating the hell of you, that is a good thing for you. Because the more Muhammad he beat you, the more Muhammad he curse you, the more Allah will bless you. What kind of a logic is that? That only can be acceptable if Muhammad is Satan. Hello? Yes, my friend, you are live on air, who I'm talking to? Can you hear me? I do hear you, go ahead. You are a Muslim? Yes, but why are you hating, bro? Why you are hating? Yes. All right, can you read for me chapter 5, verse 14? I can't see anything. No, you, op you, you, open, your, you open your Quran, read for me chapter 5, verse 14. Nah, bro, Muhammad is your ankle, bro. Are you, are you a kid? You want to make a, just a, you want to be a joker or you are a serious man? So this is the guy you get me, you know, he want to talk to me. This is the whole drama about. Muhammad is your uncle. This is how the Muslim can refute me? Why you are hating? Read your book. Your God said, Allah will spread the hatred and enmity between the Christians until the day of judgment. Your God, Allah, is the devil. Proving from your books, it's documented. For the one who spread hatred is Satan. It is documented. Can you deny it? Do we have any real Muhammadan he dare to call me and stand up, talk like a man? Is that the best you can do? And the funny is they talk about hate. When their prophet even he forbid them from loving their parents if they are not Muslims. The Quran says you will not find one person just one believer being loving or caring for his parents or his family if they are not Muslims who oppose Islam oppose Islam mean you don't accept Islam that's all you do not need to debate Muhammad you do not need to call him names you do not need to say his false your action says I don't believe in Muhammad that make you a person don't believe Islam and you oppose Muhammad Okay, I don't know. Maybe I have a Muslim. Let us see. Yes, my friend, are you a Muslim? I'm a believer. I'm all the religion. CP, I'm so excited to talk to you. I've wanted to talk to you for a long time. I love your videos. You said you are a Muslim? You love my yeah, videos? Yeah, partially. I'm Muslim and Christian. How you can be a Muslim and Christian? I'm a believer. The word was with God, and these are his two words, the most popular ones on the planet currently. Uh, so how, you, both how you can believe in two things oppose each other? I don't think they oppose each other. I think they complete each other. Okay, help me. Go ahead. I'm listening. Uh, in Surah Al-Ikhlas, uh -huh. it says, Kul huwa Allahu Ahad, yeah. Lam Yalid. Lamb you led, okay. well, lamb yakun lahu kufuan ahad. Uh -huh. So, why does he say lamb three times in Surat al Ikhlas? Why doesn't he just need to say be and it is? Who's the lamb? Why would he say what, lamb? What, three what, times what, 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 uh, let, uh, what, 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 what
Lamb means the Lamb of God. Ah, oh, Lamb of God. Uh -huh. Lamb Yalid, Lamb Yulad. Ah. But he says, Ahad and Ahad. So he said Lamb three times between Sunday and Sunday uh -huh. in the Quran. Okay. Right? Uh -huh. Isn't that easy for God? Uh, no, that's not easy because Lamb. It's the Father. But Lamb there, my friend, is not an English word. Lamb in English have nothing to do with Lamb. They, lamb, you don't they, the word there, the uh, my, my friend, hold on. The word there, Lamb, not Lamb. Lamb. Okay. So why are you are you are you making fun of the? You know, are you being funny now? I would say the fact that it was said three times between okay. Ahad and Ahad is a coincidence. Okay. From God. Okay. No problem. If he said three times, everything in Islam is based on three times. But what does have to do? I mean, here it says no, that God does three times too. Hold on. No, Christianity says that the Messiah is born of the Father. Here it says he did not have any. So it's the opposite. You gave me a verse saying the opposite of Christianity. I think it's a metaphor. I don't know. The ah, it's a metaphor. I don't know. Well, how? Okay. I don't know. What is the metaphor that Allah He begot not, and He begotten, and what is the metaphor where it says that he's mm. like an alien? He's like an alien, and ah. he sent a special miraculous sperm into Mary and created Jesus. You know, one of the leaders of the prophets. Oh, essentially. he sent. He created. Uh, he sent he semen. Who he does? Who is the Son of God? They call him the Son of God because he's so just. You know, he says they say. The peacemakers are the children of God. So God calls him his son because he's a peacemaker. He's a really righteous person. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, is Muhammad a peacemaker? To a degree. To a degree, what, yes. which, de which degree? Um, I don't know how ahead that prophet was over his comb, over his people, because you mm. can't really tell. It depends. You can't really say how bad he was because he's like... What do you mean how you know? bad he was? I mean, you're just saying that he is so bad. But you don't know how bad he is. I used to hate him. There's some good stuff I see about him and some bad stuff. Give me good things. Him. Give me good things about him. Good things was that back then, you know, when he was doing those wars and stuff and killing the non-believers, the non-believers were doing terrible stuff. Like they what? Were killing each other. Like sticking swords in girls' vaginas. What it, oh, oh, okay, I I challenge you. I challenge you to show me. Torturing the, each other. I challenge you to show me the reference for such a thing. It's had in hadith. I don't have the reference, but I swear it's hadith. They've done a lot of. Show me where it artists. says that the Arab they used to do that, because if Arab they do that, and I so I know what Muslim they say that the Arab used to kill females, right? If this is true. And males. No, hold on. No, the the, the, the Muslim look they the focus Arabs in females. Right my friend, how my are friend. The Arabs look right now. How do the Arabs act? Isn't it the same? He says you're a disbelieving people. They're even bad now. They were worse then. No, the Arab before Islam, they were way better than now, and they have more decency, and we can prove it so easy. As an example, the Arab before Islam, they never mistreated women, to the point even their goddess were females, is that correct? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, so how they look down at women, and now why they look down at women? Can you give me the answer? I was under the impression that there w it was worse for the women in the Middle East at the time. And I don't. God, I don't. I don't want to talk about in that impression. I don't. I want. I'm asking you about a fact. If yeah. the if the Arab, uh, they worship goddess as females. Yeah. So how they worship women, females, and why the Muslim now they are looking down at women? Even the Quran says that the women she can't be a witness because uh -huh. they were they were god can also be female and god sent me as the seed of the mother but no one knows this yet but the whole point, god can be man or woman but these polytheists were still evil to women no 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 no, no. you see you, you i don't know are you, a, you know are you a, are you a buddhist are you what is your religion you keep saying to me you are a muslim believer. you're not god does miracles with me. no your god your god did nothing to you except he make me make, make you ill god, please listen listen god. listen 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 i'm asking you I believe in god. you said to me god can be male and can be female correct God doesn't have a gender. Okay. He's not human. The so, Father. No. Okay, hold on, hold on. I mean, you are messed up. According to Islam, well, Allah is a male. No. Okay. Ilah, Ilah is a female. Ilah have nothing to do with that. Ilah, Ilah, is, a, Ilah, 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 is, Ilah is an Aramaic word. No, Ilah. Look, look, look. look. Just, Ilah just shut up. Just, female. just go. Don't, don't waste my time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You are just meant to be. Ilah is a now. Ilah is a is a female. Just get lost. I have no time for kids, though. Stupid.
All the Quran says Allah is a male. This is why Allah is saying in the Quran, you are worshipping instead of him females. So if he is just another female, that sentence will not make sense. <laughs> Correct, people? I don't want to waste my time with stupid, your stupidity. You're just very confused, idiot. I'm not trying to insult you, by the way, but it's who you are. You do not know what are you talking. You don't speak Arabic, and you are trying to school me in what Ilah mean. Those who you invoke upon them, they are females. So what Allah is then? Obviously, He is not a female. If Allah has no gender, then gender mean nothing to Allah. What is the complaint and the objection not to worship them? Is being a female. And he is saying clearly that when you worship a female, you are worshiping a shaitan. We don't have time for stupidity and fictions and mixing things up. You know, he said lamb three times. I, I, this is the most stupid thing ever I heard. Do you eat, do you eat uh, hashish? He said three times. Well, everything is three times. Muhammad is a fabricating religion and he is copying from others. When the Muhammadan they lie and they say that the Arab before Islam they used to be horrible, then how Khadija, she was the woman who hired Muhammad to work for her. She was a boss. Women in the time of Muhammad, they were bosses, head of companies. Men work for them. After Islam, they put the women inside a garbage black bag and they open two holes for her eyes so she can see how that is good women before Islam they used to have many husbands One woman have many husbands. Four, five, six, seven. In Islam, Muhammad, he flipped. A man, he can have four. Muhammad can have unlimited. Why the Arab before Islam, a woman, she can have many? Because women, she have the right to do anything she want. If she is so pretty, many men, they want to be with her. And as long as they don't mind that she share with other men, they don't care, they will have their night. You come to her, he says, can I marry you? I said, okay, join the line. <laughs> join the line. And when she delivers a child, she is the one who decides who is the father. It doesn't matter really who is the father. She decides who will be the father. Person like this man is a victim of maybe some... There is, there is a group of people, they call themselves uh, Chris Islam, I think. Very stupid. I mean, even a donkey will not join such a group. Hypocrite, liars, fabricators. Chris Islam. The Bible says, you cannot have light and darkness in one place. When light comes, darkness go. You can't have them in one roof. 
Tracy saying, so it was bad, as, as bad before. No, I don't think it was bad. I will tell you why. Those people are pagan. Don't judge by your moral. But this is telling you that women in that pagan society, she has all the right as the man does. In Christianity, the men have rights equal to the right of the women, which mean the man he can marry one woman and the woman she can marry one man. However, those are pagan, like the Mohammedan today. So when the woman she can have many husbands, the man he can have many wives too, if they agree. They did not, the pagan, they did not favor the male over the female or the female over the male. Which means they are way more just than Muhammad. Right? In Christianity, both of them, they have the equal right. You marry one woman, she marry only one man. That's it. So before you make a judgment, think about it. The woman, she was a businesswoman. And a great example to use is Khadija herself, who made her father drunk and took off his clothing to make him accept her to marry Muhammad because Muhammad was a scumbag, very well known to be a bad person. I mean, look how evil Muhammad is. He agreed that him and Khadija, they will drunk her father so the father, when he wake up, he see himself wearing a suit. For sure, that is the Arabian clothing, which is usually this, the man he uses when he have an occasion, expensive ones. The man, he woke up in the morning, he found himself wearing his expensive clothing. He said, what I'm doing here? What happened? He said, oh, you forgot? Yesterday it was my wedding and you married me to Muhammad. So even the marriage of Muhammad was nothing but a fraud. Even the marriage of Muhammad, the start of Muhammad's life. Khadijah was the reason for Muhammad to become a prophet because her money as a start would make him an important person in the tribe. He married a very rich woman who married multi husband before him and she buried them and she took their money. So when they lie to you and they say Islam was Islam is, 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 is better for the Arab, go and see how the Arab used to live before Islam way better. 360 statues. Nobody killing anybody. Everybody worship his religion. It was a speaker corner. Everybody preach in his religion as he wish. He worship as he wish. Nobody can anybody. Islam came. Everyone must die. Everyone is not a Muslim is najis. To the point the Mohammedan they have a sign in the highway to Mecca it says Muslims only imagine we have a highway the Muslim they talk about the what they call them the Afratis. I don't know if I'm saying the word correctly in South Africa before when the the racism was controlling the country there's a bus for the black and there's a bus for the white but this is what exists until now there's a highways for non-Muslims, and there's highway for Muslims. Why? Because non-Muslims are najis. Najis means filthy, which nobody can clean you.
Muhammadan they lie about everything in the religion because Islam without lies dies this is Islam today this is the Arab today the biggest racist organization ever non-Muslims are filthy Muslims are clean not only that Muhammad he informed the Muslims that they have a duty to bring every human being like a dog and put a chain around his neck until he converts to Islam. This is why when you see someone he claimed to be a Christian priest and he say Islam and Christianity teach the same thing, those are satanic men. Those are Satan tongue. They call themselves priests, but they are satanic. For Muhammad is nothing but an antichrist man, and Islam is nothing but antichrist belief. The whole purpose of Islam is to erase Christianity. In fact, Muhammad he says one of his name is Al Mahi. What he will erase? Al Mahi means the eraser. He want to erase Christianity and Judaism. This is why Muhammad's dream is to break the cross. To take over every church in the world. He's Satan, and Satan is his heart. What the Bible says? Who is the Antichrist? Is the one who denied the Son and the Father. And this is what Islam teach. They deny the father. Muslims don't believe in a father. They believe in a slave God. God who want you to be a slave. God in the Bible, he created mankind for he loved to share his glory. He loved to share his love with them. That's why when we pray, we say our father. We don't say our God, even though he's our God. We have relationship with God. They have slavery. And Muhammad wanted to implement slavery. And he insulted even black people. He called them very bad words. Muhammad even he said that when Allah created Adam of spring, he hit the shoulder of Adam, his right shoulder. And white offspring came like white ants. And then he hit the left shoulder of Adam. And an offspring came out who looked like a circle. Ant like circle. Very dark. And then Allah, he said, to the one who is coming from the right shoulder, you go to heaven and I don't care. And he said to the one who come from the left shoulder, which means the black, you go to hell and I don't care. This is Islam. Satanic, evil, disgusting religion. They used to have the hadith, by the way, in uh, Al Ilm website, and now they delete it. Can you believe it? They're trying to hide those hadith. very disgusting very filthy and then they go and they speak like one muslim he trying to convert people to islam he go to a black person and says do you know christianity is religion for the white jesus is white in christianity you know do you know what the white people did to you in fact every black slave bought in the west 
was bought from the Muslims. If you don't believe me, go and search right now. The Muslims in Morocco, in Tunisia, in Libya is the one who attacked the black African in the heart of Africa and they kidnap them and they kidnap their family and they sell them in the biggest market of slavery in the world, Morocco. And then what they do? They wash their hands from it and they claim that they are people not of slavery. When they're a prophet, if you ask Muslims, how many slaves Muhammad he had? How many black slaves he owned? Only satanic people is the one who try to deceive you and fabricate and duct tape Islam to make it look nice. Do we have any Muslim sheikh he dare to call me and debate me? All what we get until now a bunch of kids, they do not even know what they are talking about. May they, may they. Last call for Muhammadan. Conclusion for today. The heaven of Islam is not even fit for a child brain. It's a stupid. It's not fit for anyone who have little intelligence. You do not need to be a genius to notice that Islam is so stupid. And Islam means stupidity. Fairy tale stories. Fictions and brain injections. Muhammad, he made fun of the black. He made fun of the Asian. Even he considered that the people of Gog and Magog, who they are Asian, the most evil ever. And by the way, according to the Muslim books, the Turkish are from Gog and Magog tribe. There are 22 tribe. One of them was in a hunting trip when Allah, he commanded Al-Khadr, to, sorry, uh, uh, zul to build the dam. This is why Muhammad, he says, avoid the Turkish as long as they avoid you. Because he feared them, or he believed that they are Gog and Magog. This is why Muhammad, he made fun of the look of the Asian people, not only black. In Christ, black, white, Asian, it doesn't matter what your color is. There's no Greek, there's no Hebrew. At that time, the word Greek present what? The highest society. Greek is the empire the kings, the massive armies, the philosophers, the educators, the language, the history, the science. Big word. There's no Greek, there's no Hebrew. The Hebrew who? Hebrew is so proud. We are the children of God. We are chosen by God. No Hebrew, no Greek, no free, no slave. For all is one by Jesus. Would Muhammad, you live the era of slavery. You pray as a slave, you worship as a slave, you bow down as a slave. With the Messiah, you are a child of God. You are going to be reborn again. And you will live a holy life with the Messiah in his heaven. Not a heaven of pimps. Six. Sick heaven. 
I cannot believe that there is a God trying to tempt me. He want to give me a bracelet of gold, a bracelet of silver. How silly, how stupid, how low. I am in heaven now, and you want to give me a bracelet, why? Why a man want to wear a bracelet anyway? Female wear a bracelet. They want to be pretty. Male, they wear a bracelet for what reason? You tell me. I don't care mean that that's a decision he don't care for what is reason he sent the black people to hell or the white have to, to heaven. He don't care. Don't discuss it. I don't care. It's not important. That's it. He decide the fate that the black, according to Allah, they will go to hell. Why they will go to heaven. And this is what I don't care mean, which mean, ah, it's a fate. It's not to discuss. It's not to question why. And I don't care what you think. If I say to you, you are going to go to hell, and I don't care, that means I don't care for you. I don't care how much I'm harming you. So Allah is saying, black people will go to hell, and I don't care. Wala ubali. In the other side, the Messiah, he told us that when one soul is saved, the kingdom of God will rejoice. Our God, he care for every single one of us. And that what make there is a huge difference between the garbage of Muhammad and the amazing, beautiful teaching of the Messiah. This is a religion. If this is a religion, what then is satanic? I hope you like our video today. Feel free to download. And as you see, try to invite some sheikhs. Ask them to challenge me, to call me. We go live. And we will give them all the time, especially if they are a true respected men, which means they respect themselves when they talk. We will give them all the respect they deserve. We would like to see Muslim sheikhs calling me, proving me wrong, if you dare. Until we see you soon again, please share the video, download it, and let us have better view if you care. Otherwise, you are the same as Allah. It doesn't matter how much we try to save your children from deception and false fictions. You say to yourself, I don't care. And then the evil will come to your door, will enter your house, and let us see how I don't care help you. You don't care, I do. And the one who don't care, he is digging his grave in a deep hole where darkness only there. And those who care, God will care for them. You will be given what you deserve. And what you have will be taken from you, the Bible said. If you don't deserve it. Praise the Lord. I hope many left Islam today and many more to leave. We don't hate the Muslims, but it is absolute fact that we hate the devil and his teaching, and that is Muhammad. He is the devil himself coming to us, claiming that he is a sheep, claiming that he is a teacher, claiming that he is a prophet, and the Messiah, he warned us from false teachers who will come to you in the clothes of a sheep, but there are wolves. And it's what the Mohammedan tried to do to you and to your kids. Claiming salvation, but the fact nothing 
but sex cult, hatred, and garbage. Garbage in, garbage out. That is Islam. God bless you. And this is your brother Christian Prince who is serving you humbly for today. Take care.